So you want to know if you are a witch? A witch? <laughs> so today I'm coming to you guys with seven ways, signs, to know if you are a witch, if you're an intuitive, or if you are a psychic. I was gonna look at my notes because I forgot what I was gonna say. So, seven signs, baby! Sign number one. So sign number one is always feeling super, super drawn to nature and feeling sometimes like you're so drawn to it or taken by the wind that you don't want to be around humans anymore. Not in a weird way, um, but in a way of like you could go into the woods or by a waterfall or to a nature trail for hours on end and not have any human contact and you are perfectly content doing that forever. I had most of these signs I'm going to tell you, and they're not scary signs or anything, but I just always wondered why I was like the lone wolf. And what's interesting is somebody who's different, not saying everybody's normal or the same or whatever, for somebody who is a little different in their head, stuff that the normal kid wouldn't be drawn to is what I'm saying. Like normally kids are like, oh Legos, or like, oh my god, Barbie, and I'm like, that tree is really beautiful. I'm gonna sit under it and talk to it. This is a huge indicator. I noticed this when I was younger. Probably from my father, he was a very, is a very spiritual man. And he used to spend one hour, maybe more, before work or before starting his day in general, just sitting outside and enjoying the wind, enjoying whatever weather it was. My father loved like rainy weather too, which is, I get that a little bit from him. But it's just kind of like being still and sitting in nature and looking at all the things surrounding you and being complete, feeling overjoyed, feeling like you need nothing else in the world but this moment. So sign number two is being drawn to the occult. Constantly, constantly where you almost can't escape it. Whether it's herbs, whether it's crystals, whether it's incense, whatever it may be, it may be something light. Um, I feel like at one point or another, girls kind of go into that hippie stage of like pre-college and you're like, yeah, incense, hippie clothes, but you're not really like dedicated to it or it's not a lifestyle, it's kind of gonna drift away, but you're in that, you know? So not that type of thing, but I mean even just at a younger age, whether you're drawn to a deck of tarot cards, randomly you don't know what they mean, whether you see a, a cult shop and you're just, you lock eyes with it and you are so curious, or even the paranormal, whatever you are attracted to that is more on the supernatural, mysterious side of things and not this world considered. That's a huge indicator. For me, I'd dip my toes into it, get freaked out, and not want anything to do with it again. And I'll talk more on that about one of the other signs because that's one of the other signs. Basically, I would see my powers. Ooh, I sound like a, see my powers! But like seriously, like I'd see things work. I'd see things that I thought come to be, or in many, many different ways, not just intuition-wise. But when it did, I'd freak myself out, whether it's a dream, whether it's like I spoke it into existence, whatever it is, and it came about, oh my God, if you talked to me about that a few years ago, I'd, I'd get the chills. I just could not handle it. It's because I had a certain amount of family members who were like very spooked by it. And nobody now or nobody on my mom's side of the family, but just people that were very not into it and made me feel like I was a demon or something that I was like, oh my god, the devil is inside of her. I actually share this experience, tea time with Gianna. At a very young age, I believe I was three years old, I relived my birth in my dream. And normally when a three-year-old comes up to you and tells you, I had a dream about me being born, and it's like she can tell you or he can tell you detail for detail of what happened, you as a parent are kind of like shook. You know what I'm saying? You're not just like, oh honey, like you're joking around or whatever. My dad, literally, I remember he was like, okay. My mom used to not really think anything of it until like she kind of saw things working for her and I taught her certain things about herbs and candle magic and whatever and she's tried it for herself and she's like, holy shit. 
But other than that, when I just blabber about something, yeah, I'd freak them out for a little, but it was nothing that was like, oh my god, she's gonna grow up to be witchy or psychic or intuitive, none of that. But my father just, it was just very strange for him. He felt like, I felt like he, mm, he wasn't as surprised. He was a little freaked out, but he wasn't as surprised for the things he, he's experienced in his life. Like, of course, his child would be like that. So I had this dream. I said it detail for detail. I told him what I remember, and it was pretty much spot on, uh, which is strange, but I used to be able to do stuff like that. I also used to be able to, if my family was to say something, I'd be like three years old in my car seat and they're about to say like, I need X, Y, and Z for the store. And they'd go, I, and I'm like, need chicken for the shop. Because my dad's a chef. And he's like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, like one pound of chicken. And I knew this at three years old and I don't even like, can't even comprehend any of this. Or like, how would I know what even a pound is and chicken and, everything. I'm so young. It's just things like that that are so <sighs> not coincidences. People like to make them coincidences, I believe, because they're scared. Uh, but in the universe, nothing is a coincidence. Let's be real. We're put here. We are surrounded by beauty. I won't get into this, but you can't tell me that something didn't make this all happen that was much larger than us. This is if you have dreams, daydreams, or gut feelings, aka your intuition, and it happens soon after, this is a huge indication. Soon after meaning you think something and then it happens. My boyfriend has this a lot where he will, he can read people very well, and if somebody is not a good person or somebody is going to cause harm, he could either predict it or he gets very, ill feeling like he'll tell me like like i just don't feel good around these people and immediately his face will turn white he just has that aura about him him oh he could like predict oh my god i'm gonna see a deer when he's driving so he'll slow down and sure enough a family of fucking deer run ahead and that feeling that you out there may get that you don't know is your intuition is that kind of light to severe gut punch when you think about something or you have to decide between two things and you kind of get that feeling I should do this or I really shouldn't because it's going to end well and then something comes out of it where you're like thank god I didn't do that because I would have gotten in an accident or thank god I did go here because if I didn't I stayed home there would have been a fire all things like that which is crazy and I had to learn to separate my nervous energy from my intuition this is super hard for me because I'm a nervous energy by blood. It's just in me. My soul is a little nervous all the time. No matter what I'm doing, I'm bubbly, I'm happy, but I am an anxious energy because I need to know everything yesterday, you know? So how I determined what that was, was I feel personally, this isn't everybody, but I feel my anxiety in my chest. Sometimes in the upper region of my stomach, a pit or something that will be anxiety and it'll make me feel tight and it'll make it hard to breathe. I literally have it right now. But anyways, uh, with my intuition, I feel it right above my pelvis. It's not the gut punch that everybody tells me it is, but it is a, a known presence in my body. It's, it's just sits there and I can tap into that when I'm confused about something. And I'm like, should I go here? Will it be a good outcome? And I will kind of hold my breath for a minute and just stay in stillness and I will be able to feel whether my intuition is calm or not. Sign number three is going somewhere like a museum or a tag sale with old vintage items and feeling overcome with almost too much energy. The feeling of your head getting hot, dizziness, and like your thoughts can't stay in one position because the past people's energy is almost a bit consuming to your energy. I get this a ton when I go into antique shops or something around here we have is the elephant's trunk and it is just people's old belongings. Sometimes they have normal things like crystals or just clothing that's hippy dippy and cool and not that old, but there are items, of course, in the vintage era or thrift shopping especially where I am so consumed, I am like a different person. 
I go into complete hermit mode because I, I can't talk, I can't even keep my thoughts straight. I don't know, there's so many people, it's almost like picturing ghosts in a cartoon flying through your body a hundred at a time, just like consuming the body, going through, going through, and that's how I'm feeling. I'm feeling a constant energy shift. I'm feeling hot, I'm feeling cold, I'm feeling overwhelmed, and I'm really happy, and it's all not the alive people's energy, but the past people's energy within the items. And I was told once by a astrologer, psychic, that I am really good to take to tag sales because I can find exactly what you want instantly. And that's something I didn't know about. I know I was always attracted to the thrift shops and the antique stores and stuff like that, but I never knew I was good at it. Uh, and basically, I am just so drawn to something. That's why I am such a sensitive where when I do magical workings or something, I really have to protect myself. You should always, but from energy vampires, negative people around me, or possession. I hate even talking about it because it makes me so nervous. My energy is so sensitive. And yes, I am a strong spiritual person, so I know how to get rid of it or if I needed to get an entity off from being attached to me, I know how to do that. But the problem is, how do you keep them away when you're so sensitive in the first place? And I need to have crystals by my altar. I need to have crystals on my body. I need to be anointed with protection oil. I need to have incense, frankincense, myrrh burning to keep those things away. I need a witch's glass to consume those energies and to lock them in there so they don't affect me because I am so, so sensitive. Um, that's one struggle that people don't take seriously. And I think I, I struggled with that for a long time because I assumed, not that I was invincible or anything, but I would almost forget the protection on my part of a ritual. I'd forget that I need to be protected as much as my space needs to be protected. Don't do more than one heavy duty spell in a day. Seriously, don't, because I had psychic attack and I had, I hate talking about this, something consume me and it took a lot of energy to fucking get it out or to not feel it anymore and feel just Gianna again, but they like your energy, whether it is good, whether it is bad, these spirits even ancestors are attracted to your energy. If you are a light worker, you are going to probably experience something like this and you could protect yourself to the nines and you will still experience something like this. And it doesn't mean the energy is bad or demonic in any way, shape or form. It just means it's a spirit and your body kind of doesn't know how to react to it because it's a side of the brain, the side of the body that we haven't tapped into. We only use like 10% of our brain. I know this is crazy and I know people have heard this before and probably think it's bullshit, but it's true. It's like when you open your third eye or something and you get really sick because we aren't built to, at least human-wise, experience this. We have to unlock it like a level in a game and it's crazy, but this is life. If I don't have a crystal on me or I don't surround myself with divine white light before I perform something or before I do even something as simple as a money spell. It doesn't have to be anything crazy like deep shadow work or, or love or anything like that. It could be money. It could be a wish. It could be anything. If I don't protect myself, I'm screwed. <laughs> I told you about the dreams and the visions coming true and whatever, but this has a little spin on it where when you have those dreams and vision, this is another sign. I don't know what <laughs> number I'm at. Basically, when you have these visions, another sign of being witchy, intuitive, or psychic is being able to control them on and off, literally like a machine. So my body, when I'm fearful of my power, doesn't work. <laughs> my body works, but that part I got to tap into that was so magical because I feared it goes away. I could have a dream and wake up and it happens and the problem with me is what's so scary is when I have these dreams and these predictions, it's terrifying if they aren't good ones. You know, if I'm like so-and-so is going to get sick, so-and-so is going to die because it gets morbid sometimes, 
I don't want that. Sometimes I'm terrified to know the future and I'm such a wanting to know person so it's interesting that I'm scared of it sometimes. That's why fear affects my abilities and this could be a sign for you as well. As soon as you are aware of something and you get nervous about it or you talk too much about it, ability is gone. And it is your own body putting you into protection mode that's turning it off. It's not the universe taking it away from you. You still have that. You just came out of it. It's tapped into, like you unlocked it, baby, but you pulled yourself out or your body unconsciously pulled yourself out of it. And to open that back up, I noticed that I have to get back into my practice in a very slow way. And then the visions soon appear again. And you can't be scared of them. For me, I've learned to come to a point where I rather be aware than not aware because I feel like I can prepare myself somehow. And the universe doesn't give us things we can't handle anyways, but it's just a little bit better knowing down the road. All right, maybe keep your guard up a little bit for this one or maybe bond more with this person because X, Y, and Z is the outcome. So before I tell you the sixth sign, I'm going to clarify that if you have watched Sabrina, The Chilling Adventures, Sabrina, whatever, on Netflix, the Sabrina the Teenage Witch, and what I'm about to say ties into that, and I found that some things that were played out in the show reign true to witches. And the thing that I didn't like and why I stopped watching the show, which is a personal opinion, is the whole demon thing. The whole praise, you know what, I do not like that. I'm not comfortable with that. For me, it brings such a dark energy. Some people, doesn't affect them. Me personally, I told you, I'm so affected that I just couldn't even watch it. I'm three episodes in and I'm loving the show and then all this demon shit just ruins it for me because I don't know, there's such a stereotype and it makes me nervous myself. I am no association with anything demonish and it really roils me that sometimes people get presented that way. I don't know, it makes me upset. So how this ties into is I'm talking about your familiar. And yes, she has a familiar that is a black cat in the episode and what I found out to be true is that I don't have just one familiar. I have all my pets at one point are my familiar. And a familiar <laughs> basically is an animal that you share a spiritual connection with. It could be your pet. It could be a stray pet that constantly comes by. Something that you have a true connection with and they block you from negative energy. They are constantly protecting you and your space. That is your familiar. What was I gonna say about this? You could speak to them, but regardless, they understand your body language without the need to say a word. So that's kind of something that a majority of people have, but in the witchy community, you could say that when you're performing spell work or something like that, or you're really highly emotional, that animal will come over your shoulder to protect you. And that anim animal will be in your presence and be attentive and standing by the door or something like that because they know you could be signaling the animal something or ask it something, this sounds literally insane, of danger if you're protected, if you should do this, if you should do that, you could lay things out in front of it and that animal will in some way, shape or form with its body language, it give you the answer. My cat, I have two cats and one is more witchy, my black cat of course, which is so stereotypical, but what they known for and it's the truth, it's in their blood that she protects me ritualistically and magically as well as my emotions in real life. She loves me, she cuddles with me, all that stuff. She warns me every time there is danger. And in this way, she will either bring me to something, want me to walk with her somewhere, she will stand by something, or she will constantly meow 500,000 times and not let me walk even one inch away from her if she knows the area is unsafe or me going out is unsafe and I stay home and I avoid so much shit, it's ridiculous. My cat is the more sensitive one. The other one that's not the black cat, the gray and white Frankie, he is 
almost my empath cat. Empath. I hope I'm saying that right. <laughs> um, he is more prone to my sensitivities while the other one is the protector he is the emotional protector when i'm going through something at my side when i am confused about something at my side when i am happy at my side constantly at my side he is more mushy more dopey and she's more like serious diva but sometimes loves whatever i don't know why this got into a description of my animals but i'm trying to make this go fast so the last sign, I believe, you are psychic, intuitive, or witchy is having a touch or voice that people believe is relaxing or healing. Someone can be having a horrible day. You come, give them a hug, or they listen to your voice on the phone and feel a big sense of calm. Also, you being able to create items, whether it be products to put on the body or food for others, and they feel only your product is the most potent or works. So this is all about energy. For me, as crazy as it sounds, I believe this is a form of Reiki, my mom told me, which I had no clue of. I, with the people I love, cannot even touch their bodies for massage or whatever. Say if somebody's like, oh my God, my neck, and I go to do it, I don't even have to touch their body. I could hover my hands, and the energy from my hands and the the heat through my energy without touching them makes them feel amazing. It's such a weird thing, but when I give somebody a hug or I speak to them on the phone, the number one compliment I get is about my voice and how my voice, your voice helps me with my anxiety and you're so calm or you're so relatable and I love watching your videos. This is multiple people. I love watching your videos because of your voice and like, me, I'm just so confused, but it's my favorite compliment because sometimes I think my voice is annoying and I'm sure sometimes it is, but it's so interesting other people's perspective because you hear your voice every day, you think nothing of it. But something like that or being able to give somebody a hug and they say, oh, that was a really good hug. It's being that warm ball of white healing light and energy that these people pick up on your body because you can't help but radiate it. It's just having that natural touch of healing. My mother has this, obviously with us children, children, but with my animals. Any animal, period, loves my mother. And sometimes I get so jealous about it because I'm like, what the heck, I don't have that with animals. Mine is more human contact, but that is a huge, huge indicator, and that's what I'm leaving it on because I believe this is so, so important and a huge sign. One of the signs not talked about at all is the sense of being around a spiritual being, a psychic, an intuitive, a witch, whatever you identify as, and feeling that sense of protection and calm and knowing this person has your best interest or this person is going to keep you out of harm's way. I'm going on a whole tangent, but I hope you guys enjoyed these seven spiritual blah 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 ways, I don't want to say the whole name, of finding out what you are, if you are, and to know that you're not crazy and you're not the only one if you experience these things. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will catch you in the next one. The light just got really bright and I'm sure I look like a ghost. I don't know. Have a good day. Never know how to end these. Love you. Love you. Love you. See you in the next video. Bye.